A couple more topics to discuss. These are things that are for your information. So we'll only learn enough about this for you to go and find out more yourself if you're truly interested. Certainly not enough here to test on an exam and you won't be responsible for it on an exam. To start with, let's talk about uh, concurrency control for indexes. You might think you could just do two-phase locking on the index pages using page level locking. Well, 2PL on B plus tree pages is a terrible idea. Think about the first thing you would lock. You'd lock the root of the tree because all queries pass through the root. Unfortunately, that means that all queries essentially are going to conflict on the root, and therefore we're not going to get any concurrency through the B tree if we use two-phase locking. So instead, there are schemes that are going to use non-two-phase locking, very short locks, which are sometimes called latches to distinguish them from two-phase locks, and they're used in a clever way. The general idea is that the upper levels of the B tree don't actually hold data. They're just there to route traffic, that is to say to route query searches, to the right data in the leaves. And so we actually don't need the upper levels of the B tree to be serializable, and we don't need 2PL. We just need to make sure that the upper levels of the B tree always eventually route traffic to the right spot. So there's been a couple different tricks in the literature to exploit this. One that's pretty elegant to read is the B link tree, and that's used in some systems. Most recently, Microsoft has a scheme called the BW tree that's a variant of the B link tree that they use in their main memory database. So those are two different schemes and B trees with um, lightweight latching that you might want to go have a look at. I will say that these papers are more or less complicated. The BW tree is actually quite complicated. And so not for the faint of heart, but if you want to learn some interesting concurrency control for indexes and databases, I encourage you to learn about these things. Another scenario that's interesting to know about is called phantoms. Let me motivate this with an example. Suppose that you're querying for sailors with a rating between 10 and 20 using a, uh, an alternative to B plus tree. So you walk down this B plus tree to the bottom, you find a set of tuples in the database that satisfy this range query, and for each tuple, you get it in a shared lock before you go fetch it. So you've locked all the sailors with rating between 10 and 20. But your transaction is not done, so you're still holding your locks. Meanwhile, I come along and I insert a new sailor record for the Dread Pirate Roberts, and he's got a rating 12, which falls within your query range. Suppose now, still in your same transaction, you repeat your query, looking at all the sailors between 10 and 20. Yikes, you will see a phantom. The Dread Pirate Roberts has somehow appeared in your query, even though you had already locked all the tuples with ratings between 10 and 20. So how did the Dread Pirate Roberts sneak in? Well, when you think about it, the Dread Pirate Roberts tuple wasn't there, so you didn't lock it. I inserted it, and I had nothing to conflict with, so my insert was perfectly successful. So the problem with this scenario is that all our work we've done so far on serializability has assumed no inserts into the database. We've assumed that the database is static. And what we really want in this query when we look between 10 and 20 is to lock a logical range from 10 to 20, including any tuples that might fall into that range in future. But it's hard to imagine how you would build a lock table for locking ranges of things. After all, a hash table only locks equality values. Uh, we'd have to come up with some new data structure to hold this lock table, and that doesn't work very well, experience has shown. Instead, uh, there's a scheme in the literature called next key locking, in which we lock tuples that aren't actually in our query, they're just the next key bigger than our query, to protect a range of values. Now, I'm not going to be able to explain how next key locking works here, but it's something to know about, and it is the general scheme for avoiding phantoms. So if you're curious about it, I encourage you to look it up uh, and find out more.